Uh, that's what I have to say about inequalities in triangle. Oh, one other thing. So earlier, I said that I would get back to this. So I'll do that now. So what we want to do here is take the Ravi substitution, x, y, and z as before. Then the right hand side uh, becomes this. Just expanding. And then the left hand, now s square s is this. So s squared is this. And then, of course, we still have this r squared plus 4rr term. So now what we want to prove becomes equivalent to proving this. Now. We know k equals rs. This is a standard formula, like breaking up the triangle into aib and aic and bic, and then using base times height over 2 to compute each area. We get it's ar over 2 plus br over 2 plus cr over 2. So rs. So uh, we know that k squared is this. So this is. But s squared is this. And x, y, and z are positive, so we can cancel this from both sides. So r squared is this. Furthermore, uh, we also know that the area is this. So as I said earlier, we get this. which also gives us a formula for A, B, C in terms of R, R, and S. But then we can also get 4 R, R from this. So 4 R, R is So putting these over a common denominator, what we need to verify is just this. Or actually, I can write this as one fraction. But this is like just expanding this, then the numerator factors as the product of these. So that is exactly what we want to prove. Just that's like the rest is just to expand the numerator. So that's that. But there but I'm not quite done with the video because I also want to briefly mention Ptolemy's inequality. Oh, actually, there is more I want to say after Ptolemy's inequality. Ptolemy's inequality says, let A, B, C, and D be any points. They don't even have to lie in a plane. Then
then there's also an, the equality case is actually interesting, so I'll get to that. But first of all, how do we prove this? Well, let's invert about A. with radius 1. Then b prime c prime equals, there's the inversive distance formula. So there's this, because of the similar triangles a b prime c prime and a c b. Similarly, this. This proof is also found in the book, The First 10 Years of the Berkeley Math Circle, or whatever that's called. But yeah, lots of these proofs are classics. Uh, uh, well, actually, this inequality, of course, is very much a classic, considering how long ago he lived. But anyway, so now this just becomes the triangle inequality on this triangle, with equality if and only if C lies on line segment BD which holds if and only if a, b, c, and d are concyclic in that order, or they're collinear um, with s in one of these configurations, a, b, c, d, or c, a. Such, like basically, if they're collinear such that a and c separate b and d. gives equality. So that's Ptolemy's inequality. And one more, one more inequality. And this is uh, very, this is often very useful. And this turns into a theorem if they're, this turns into an equality if they're concyclic, which is useful in competitions uh, for computing things. Uh, but yeah. And one other inequality. The erdos mordel inequality. Which is, let ABC be a triangle, and let P be an interior point. And let P1 P2 and P3 be the feet of the perpendiculars from P2, BC, AC, and AB, respectively. Then, PA plus PB plus PC is greater than or equal to 2 times the quantity PP1 plus PP2 plus PP3. And equality holds if and only if ABC is equilateral. And P is its center. And an equilateral triangle only has, uh, has one center. All of these points turn into the same point if ABC is equilateral. So how do we prove this? Well, we will use a lemma. And you can find more proofs of this, including this proof in lemmas in Olympiad geometry. But let's use a lemma called Mordell's lemma, which says that in this configuration, AP is greater than or equal to its, I believe, P 
PP3 times AC over BC plus PP2 uh, times AB over BC. Now to prove this, we will take the reflection of P over the interior angle bisector of angle BAC and call that point P prime and call its perpendicular feet P2 prime on AB and P3 prime on AC. So then what we want, oh, we can clear the denominators. So this is equivalent to this. Then AP prime equals AP, since A lies on the line we're reflecting over. Uh, so this, oh. So this is equivalent to AP prime times BC greater than or equal to PP3. Uh, no, 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 wait. Oh, I mislabeled that. Uh, yeah, that shouldn't have a prime. PP3 equals P prime, P3 prime. Because the distance from P prime, the distance from P to AB is the same as the distance from P prime, the reflection of P over the interior angle bisector, to the reflection of AB over the angle bisector, which is just AC. So that's P prime, P3 prime times AC. And similarly, P, P2 equals P prime, P2 prime. I suppose the technical reason for this is that reflection is an isometry, so it preserves distances. So it, like, it preserves congruence and everything. So yeah, that's pretty obvious. Now, let's divide by 2. Yes, yes, yes. Let's divide this by 2. Then we notice that this is the area of this triangle, base times height over 2. So this is a p prime c, and this is a p prime b. So putting these together, because P lies in the interior of the triangle, it lies in the interior of this angle. So P prime also lies in the interior of, these, of this angle. So putting these together, we get quadrilateral square brackets denote area. So now what we need to prove is just this. But uh, we have this. So now we have a quadrilateral. Now, if we intersect them at an angle of theta, uh, well, actually, yeah, I'd ra I guess I I'd rather not do that proof, actually. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, I guess I'll just keep following the proof in lemmas in Olympiad geometry. Uh, the area, like taking this pedal, taking this po point perpendicular, I guess, is z. Then we want to prove, then that p prime z times bc is uh, the area of b prime c. And Yes. So actually, no. Forget that. I'll actually keep going with what I was doing. So I have this quadrilateral. Suppose its diagonals intersect at an angle of theta. I claim its area uh, is times, I guess,
minus absolute value of sine theta over 2. I claim that this is the area, which would then immediately give us the desired result, since the absolute value of sine theta is less than or equal to 1. Now, to prove this, let the, the diagonals intersect at point x. And here I'm doing the case where x lies on the extension. Like, I guess I'll just say, use directed lengths. So we're looking at this sort of as a number line where, like, xb is, well, I'll just say that other cases are similar to this one. Uh, so we write this, because we could also have this case. But this case is similar to what I'm about to do. APBC equals ABX plus ACX uh, minus BPX minus CP, no, minus BP prime X minus CP prime X. This triangle's area plus this triangle's area, which would be this whole thing, minus this triangle's area plus this triangle's area, which is this whole thing. Again, the square brackets denote area. And then I can use the formula for area, that area of triangle UVW equals UV times UW times absolute value. I, I, no, I don't actually, yeah, I don't actually need to say absolute value. Never mind. I guess I don't need these either. Sign VUW all over 2. It just basically follows from base times height over 2. So then we can factor out a sine theta over 2 in this and write this as sine theta over 2. Because sine of theta is e equal sine of 180 degrees minus theta. So we can factor that out. And then we get ax times bx plus ax times cx minus p prime x times bx minus p prime x times cx. And lo and behold, this factors as this. And this case is similar, except these would be pluses, and that would be a plus. But we would still be able to write, in either case, that this is a p prime and this is BC, which gives us the desired formula. So now we have proven Mordell's lemma because sine theta is less than or equal to 1. And these are non negative or positive, whatever. So that proves Mordell's lemma, and now the proof of the Erdős Mordell inequality. So, oh, when does equality hold in Mordell's lemma? So for equality to hold, we must have sine theta equals 1, which implies that a p prime and b c are perpendicular. So p must lie on the reflection of a p prime over the angle of the altitude of the a altitude over the a angle bisector. And it turns out that this is actually the line through a and the circumcenter of a b c, but I won't be using that right there. Um, but yes, so now we, so now we write out Mordell's lemma three times. One for each vertex. BP is greater than or equal to uh, this. And then adding these up, we get this.
now each of these, so now these are all non-negative, or I guess positive, since we said p lies in the interior. And each of these is at least two, each of these coefficients. Because each one can be written in the form r plus 1 over r for some positive real number r in an obvious way. And this is 2 plus this, which by the trivial inequality, since r is like just by expanding, which by the trivial inequality is greater than or equal to 2, with equality if and only if r equals 1. So we can write this. which proves the inequality part of the erdos model inequality. And for when does equality hold? Well, we would have to have each of these equal to 2, because these are all positive, which implies that r equals 1 in each one. So we need this to be equal to 1, and this, and this, which implies that ABC is equilateral. Furthermore, we must have equality in Mordell's lemma, which implies that P lies on the reflection of the A altitude over the A angle bisector. In an equilateral triangle, those are the same. So P lies on the A altitude, both, and the B altitude, and the C altitude. So P is the orthocenter, which is the center. So that proves Erdős -Mordel, the erdős model inequality with the equality condition. And I suppose that's all I have right now. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter, at Luke. That's Luke underscore Robitaille. Thank you.